Okay, we are in, we're watching a Clint Eastwood movie tonight. Um, is that okay with y'all? <laughs> we're in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Yeah. Luke chapter 10. Um, I'll try to be brief tonight. We had a preacher one time, uh, Michael Rice. Y'all know Brother Mike? He's a, a black preacher, good preacher. He, I had him at my church. He said, before he preached, he said, as Elizabeth Taylor said to her last husband, he said, I won't keep y'all long. <laughs> so uh, so I'm not going to keep you long this <laughs> So we're in Luke chapter 10. And... Uh, <clears throat> Feel free to comment or share. And I've just sort of been randomly, you know, moving around, nothing in order uh, on Wednesday evenings. And I think it's worked pretty good. And we're going to do that this evening. Um, and yes, we are going to use as our outline because we're looking at three different characters. We're looking at three different philosophies of life. I know that sounded like a big word, and I felt big using it, but it's really not. So three philosophies of life, and represented by three characters. A The ugly man is a thief, a stealer. The bad guy is uh, super stingy and selfish. And the good guy is a saint like Christ and uh, okay so I think it's good it's a parable Luke chapter 10 verse 25 is where it begins um, it begins here and we're just going to read down through here it begins here because Jesus is giving the parable in a response to a gentleman who is very, he's on an ego trip. He sees himself as basically <clears throat> sinless. He thinks of himself apart from Christ. He thinks of himself very, very qualified for heaven. He's one of the best candidates for heaven that there is because he sees himself as a very, very righteous person. Okay? So, it says, Behold a certain lawyer. And that's the King James for lawyer here. It's just a very, very religious guy. Don't think of your lawyer who settles all your disputes but he's just sort of a big religious guy he stood up and tempted <clears throat> Jesus so he's got a little motive here and he said to Jesus master what shall I do to inherit eternal life how would you answer that I mean, if somebody you work with got disturbed about their spiritual condition and came to you and said, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? Have eternal faith. Eternal faith? God in God in their life? Salvation. Salvation. Repent and trust Repent. Jesus. What did y'all say to you? Turn your life around. Turn your life around. It's a big question, right? I mean, you can, it's, you can phrase it different ways. What do I need to do to go to heaven? What must I do to be saved? What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Um... <laughs> Anyhow, uh, really, to me, the que there's a little word in his question that, that 
really just uh, clobbers all of his stuff, and it's the word inherit. <laughs> when you inherit something, it is a gift. <laughs> and so he's saying, what shall I do to it? Okay, now I'm not making fun of his question, but, but think about it, okay? Um, if I'm Russell Wood's son, and Russell Wood is very wealthy, See, I'm putting all these ifs because we have to use hypotheticals, don't we? Know? Um, so I receive inheritance, not because I did anything, but because I'm his son. See that? At which eternal life is based solely on relationship that's where the word inherit comes from salvation and everything else is a gift right okay so in other words well let's just hurry i'm going to get stalled right here and i apologize for that okay let's read on jesus said what's written in the law and then jesus said how do you read it Ah, that's a big question. We've all got the same Bible. How can two people read the same Bible different? I mean, you explain that to me, and I'll explain to you why we have 10,000 different denominations that read the Bible different. Okay? Now, uh, Jesus said, what does the law say? <clears throat> now, see, let me throw this in here real quick. Jesus, I would never do that. If somebody come and ask me what they need to do to have eternal life, I would never say, I would never go to the law because Jesus knows his motive. He knows his heart. And he, he knows what he's up to. Okay. So Jesus, so Jesus said, how do you read the law? And this guy said, well, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, strength, mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two great commandments. And this dude has the audacity to stand there and say that he has always loved God with all of his heart, all of his soul, all of his mind, all of his strength. That right there gets us all, doesn't it? I mean, that shoots us all down. That very first greatest law right there, the law of love. So Jesus uh, um, said to him, you've answered right. This do, and you will live. But that's not enough for this turkey. He's so caught up on himself. But he presses the point, willing, and here's the crux, to justify himself. How do you all interpret that? He's trying to justify himself. How would you all interpret that? What's he up to here? What does it mean when this guy is wanting to justify himself? Well, he's saying that. Make excuses. Yeah, it's very yeah. Many excuses. <laughs> Don't you think it's a little more than making excuses, though? I mean, I understand where you're all coming from because you, want, you sin, but you want to cover it up. You try to justify it, right? Which is true. Which is true. But... Uh, at the same time, on the flip side of that coin, you got to remember now, this guy really, really sincerely believes that he is good enough to go to heaven. How many of you feel that way? How many of you, I mean, in all sincerity, and we're not taking it lightly, how many of you feel, even now, knowing that you're a Christian, how many of you feel unworthy to be in heaven? And I mean, we're sitting here thinking, how, how can any person look in the mirror, spiritual mirror of their life, of their actions, of their thoughts, and, and say, I can do this without Jesus? Me and you are scratching our heads. We're like, who would do that? Millions. Millions. And you know how they do it? You know how most people justify themselves? They compare their life with somebody they think is less than them. 
You see, that's why 2020 and all these places like to pick out preachers on TV that fall and, and get us all in one sweep, you self-righteous people. So they sit at home unsaved, looking at us. Well, I'm as good as they are, but you and me know we're not the measuring stick. What is God's measuring stick? Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Any, nobody's lived up to that. Okay, so this guy is literally thinking to himself, hey, I've done all the commandments. I'm, I'm, I'm good. And so he says to Jesus, <laughs> wanting to tempt Jesus, who is my neighbor? Oh, and then Jesus, Jesus takes his inside out. He turns it inside out, upside down. And at the end of this parable that you're all familiar with, Jesus does something that you're not expecting him to do. Okay? So let's play it out. So here's the ugly in our outline, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Here comes the ugly. Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He fell among thieves. They stripped him of his raiment, beat him or wounded him, which is beat him, and then they departed, leaving this poor fella half dead. Okay. This is the ugly. This is the, here, write this down. Here's the first philosophy of life that I'm giving you. The ugly guy, the, the thief, the robber, the violent, he beat, he stole from this man. His philosophy is this. What's yours is mine. I'll take it. What's yours is mine, I'll take it. Isn't it amazing that America, in portions of America, we are literally promoting this lifestyle? Did you know you can go into stores in California and steal, but as long as you keep it under a thousand bucks, that you're right. We are promoting what's yours is mine. I don't mind paying taxes. This is why I voted for a particular president and did not vote for a president because I wasn't voting on personality. I was voting on policies, and I was voting against socialism. Socialism says... Kevin makes more than less. That's not right. Let's take from Kevin and balance it out to less. Even though, and I know less works very hard, but this is just an example, Les. I'm not picking on you. Even though Kevin works hard and less doesn't, it's not right. Socialism says what is what is yours is ours. We will take it. And socialism is a subtle form of stripping you of your stuff. It's deadly. It's, it's on the verge of communism. The only difference in communism and socialism, in communism you have a dictator, in socialism the government is your dictator. And, and we have promoted this. We have Christians, so-called Christians, have voted this in. But it's, and so now you see, just like the riots, that we sat and watched riots and people go in and steal because that philosophy of life in a rational, reasonable person's mind, is like, that is so wrong, but we see it today being promoted, which is very, very wrong. And, and I hope that's not you and I. There, there are people who live by this philosophy, and they'll say, I don't care who I step on, I am going to get that promotion. I don't care who I hurt. What's yours is mine, 
I'll take it. And it is a very, I mean, you're just sitting there thinking, Brother Bobby, tell us something we don't know. And, you know, that philosophy of life is just wrong. And yet you and I have to be very, very careful. Because when we were kids and we wanted our friend's toy, we grow up and we want other things that don't belong to us. Amen? Any questions or comments on that? So we ain't got to the punchline yet for the, for the young man who's trying to justify himself. So verse 31 and 32, we have the bad guys. We had the ugly one. So we have the bad guys. These are um, for 2022 layman terms. These are uh, religious people. I don't want to say church members because that picks on us and we shouldn't be. But anyhow... So by chance, there came a certain priest that way. When he saw this guy who was laying there half dead. Now, yeah, I shouldn't bring this up. It just popped in my mind. Let me, let me hang on to it. And if I need to, I need to. I want you to put yourself in in. in in this man's shoes. So you're coming down from Jerusalem to Jericho and, and, and you see a guy half dead. I mean, he's, he's, it's obvious he's been beaten and robbed. Okay. What, what's your instinct? <clears throat> Patsy, let me, let me, let me test that. You're so right. I'm not arguing with you, but would y'all pick a hitchhiker up? Is that a different? That's not fair, is it? It's different. I mean, if there was a, a car wreck or something, and or look like something, aren't we instinctive to? I want to say that I wouldn't walk past this guy and say, "Well, sir, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna be late for church." <laughs> what would we do? I mean. I'm saying what's instinctive here. You know, there's a guy in the building, he's killing little angels. And we're sitting out twiddling our... Th isn't, isn't... Y'all trying to see what I'm saying? Isn't something in us instinctive going to say, if I die, I die, like Esther. If I perish, I perish. I'm going in. And so here's this guy. And so the priest, the priest of all people, Okay, it's not just the priest, verse 32, a Levite, a guy who is very, very religious, cop, makes copies of God's word, and he serves in the temple, and he came to the place too, saw this guy half dead, walk right around him. Do you all, I'm just testing us tonight, so... Please test me too. Do you think churches only want to invite and win a certain class of people to church? Huh? Depends on the church. Depends on the church. That's exactly right. Is there, so are we going to be an ugly church or a bad church? But you're right. Why are we like that? Why, why are we afraid of drug addicts and alcoholics and, and homosexuals and lesbians? These people need Jesus. A lot of people don't understand them. If you've never it's, been it's there, never, never you, been around them. if you've never been through it or know somebody, mm -hmm. you don't know that, what that person goes through. But, because people say, I would never do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, just like this guy. Yeah. So, so we're turning out to be this guy, yeah. the, the guy trying to justify himself. <laughs> That's scary, Sister Patsy, because we're categorizing people. He's a worse sinner than I am. <gasps> you know, oh, did you hear and so, about so-and-so on TV and he's committed adultery, and yet how many people do porn? Soap operas, soft porn. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm just trying to get us all right here. 
But we, we do make that mistake, I think, of, of walking by this guy, you know, maybe if he was a hometown boy and we knew him, what do you do? Man, come on, I'm going to take you home with me, da-da-da. But if it's a stranger or, uh, you know, we just... Lack of compassion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We all need right. to pack mirrors around with us. Yeah. To remind ourselves. And it's a lot harder to do today than it was 40 years ago. Yeah. It's a totally different world. It is. Right. Right. You've got totally flipped. You've got so many people out there today that prey on those that will help. Yeah. And then take advantage of them. Mm -hmm. So society has also turned that around so that the Good Samaritans will be punished for what they're trying to do, i.e. somebody broke down the side of the road or walking and you stopped to help them. They pull out a gun, kill you, rob you, take your vehicle. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. I think what? that's where we need discernment. If God puts it on your heart for that person, I, bless, I don't even know this, but I've took people home because God's like, I started driving away and they're like, you need to go ask them if they need to ride home. Yeah, wow. You be careful, Patsy. And Talk I don't do it unless I know God is telling me. Yeah, yeah. But well, I get the biggest blessing by them while I'm taking them home. Yeah. How God uses that. Yeah. Yes, and and you know, um, okay, first of all, let me give you the philosophy of life this is. Okay, the, far, the ugly says, what's yours is mine. I'm going to take it. These guys, the bad guys, their philosophy of life is, what is what's mine is mine. I'm going to keep it. Okay? It's, it's, it's like getting saved, put it in a little napkin, and put it in your pocket, and you don't do anything with it. Um, and I want to tell you one of the most powerful parables that Jesus gives, and he gives this, you can read it when you get home, we don't have time tonight, but it, I think it's in Matthew 25. It refers to how Jesus is going to separate the sheep from the goats at the judgment. And he says this, at the judgment, Jesus is going to say this. What did you do about these people? that needed me, like this guy who was half dead and passed by. Jesus is going to look at the goats, and he's going to say, I was hungry, you never fed me. I was naked, you never clothed me. I was in prison, you never come to see me. I was thirsty, and you never gave me a drink of water. And they said, Lord, we never saw, when did we see you hungry, naked, thirsty? And oh, Jesus said, in the least of thee. I'm serious on this. I've told you all more than once, and I'll keep saying it. You do not have any idea how many times I pick up, most of the time, a widow lady whose kids never call, whose kids never come and see them. How many times I've left nursing homes, and they will say, so that her daughter's going to meet you there, and her daughter's never there. What I'm saying is, have we forgotten about the people that can't give anything back? You know what makes me so mad? I'm sorry, y'all. It makes me really, really, really mad because I've even heard preachers, and I'm not picking on preachers. Thank God this is a, a rare breed, but I've heard it said, the people we want to bring into our church, we want tithers. We want money people. That's what's happened to the church. That's what's happened to the church. Nobody wants to minister to somebody who can't give you nothing. The least of these. And Jesus says to the sheep, I was thirsty. You gave me a drink of water. I want, can I tell you all a quick story? Uh, you ever got a spanking from God? This is a day at T.J. Sampson Hospital. I got a big spanking from God. But it, 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 it did change me. It did change. It, it changed a lot of my thing. It's really short, and I'll share it with you. Um, I have two good brothers in the Lord, Donnie and Jason Perry. Met them at Shady Grove, become just wonderful men of God. Love them to pieces, love them to pieces. So anyhow, I'm at T.J. Sampson, and I'm visiting. And 
I come on this room coming off the second floor, and I hear this old woman groaning real loud. Oh, and I peek in there, and nobody's in there. She's got an old coal rag over her head. And so it happened to be Donnie and Jason's mama. And when I got in there, and I, so I went over to the bedside, and she could hardly talk, had the rag on her forehead, barely got her eyes open. And I, you know, told her who I was, and I seen her looking at this cup of ice sitting right there, like, I want some. So I get the cup of ice, a little styrofoam cup of ice, and I get my little plastic spoon, and I put some in her mouth, and she's just like steak. Now get this, I'm embarrassed to tell you this, but I, I think it fits the point. I'm standing there like this stupid little guy tempting Jesus in my little stupid preacher arrogance. And I'm feeding this old woman ice thinking, I could be preaching a great revival. I could be winning people to the Lord. I could be doing so much stuff. And I'm sitting here feeding this old woman ice. They ought to be here doing it. Oh my goodness. And immediately... Jesus said to me, that's me in that bed. Whoosh, I get chills. That's me. If you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. You talking about a spanking. You talking about wanting to get down in your shoes and hide. I realize we've lost so much in America. The church only wants to minister to people that are like us. Am I right? And so let's me and you move out of this selfish, you know, get all you can, can all you get. What's mine is mine. I'll keep it. Boy, aren't you glad God so loved he he gave. Look what he has given. Which leads us to the third and final philosophy is the good guy. I'm glad we finally got around to him. A certain Samaritan, and saying Samaritan to a Jew was like saying a four-letter word. A Samaritan. This Samaritan was journeying, coming down where he was. He saw this guy, just like the others, and he had what? If you take the C-O-M off of the word passion, you, gotta, you can have a, you, the two men that just walked by. Full of religious passion, the C-O-M prefix means with. Passion means to suffer. Calm means with, to suffer with him. Jesus his, we call it the passion of Christ. He suffered for us. But Jesus had compassion with us. And so it's scary to be a religious fanatic, be very religious, but to lose the C-O-M. You don't want to touch this dirty guy and get your hands dirty. So this Samaritan went to him, bound up his wounds, poured in oil and wine, we're talking money, set him on his own beast, brought him to a little motel, and took care of him. The next day when he departed, he took out two pence and gave to the host and said, take care of him. Whatever you spend more, I'll come back and repay. I'm laughing because I'm like, this is not happening. People don't do this. You don't do that. Who, who takes somebody you don't even know and you spend money and you... Who does that? Well, God does it. Amen. I mean, that's the picture of grace, brothers and sisters. That's the picture of exactly we were the ones beaten by the devil in sin and robbed of life and joy. And Jesus came and he bound up our wounds and on and on and on. That's just the beauty of Jesus. But it's not about, I'm sorry, don't get me wrong. This is not about Jesus. Jesus isn't making it about himself. I mean, he has literally reared back spiritually, verbally, punched this old guy in the face. 
because here's the punchline. Which now of these three, oh, by the way, that third philosophy of life is what's mine is yours. I'll share it. What's mine is yours. I'll share it. Wasn't, you remember that song, Sister Carrie, love wasn't put in your heart to stay. It ain't love till you give it away. Love wasn't put in your heart to stay. It's not love till you give it away. And John says, love isn't words, it's deeds. Which now of these three do you think was, now here's the punch, read it carefully, read it carefully. Which one of these three do you think was neighbor unto him? Did y'all get that? It's tricky. The, the guy at the beginning who wanted to justify himself says, who is my neighbor? Jesus just looked at him and said, you're looking at it wrong. Remember Jesus asked him, how do you read it? Jesus looked at him and said, sir, nobody around you is your neighbor. You're the neighbor. Which means everybody is your neighbor. Do you all, did you all get that? Okay. So he said, he that showed mercy on him. Duh, he finally said something right. How could he not? Then Jesus said, go and be like this guy. Go and show mercy on somebody. I love that. Because... I am so far, like many of you, we're so far from perfection, amen? amen. But I'll tell you what, I, it is such, you ever, you ever just bless somebody? You ever just bless somebody in the thrill and the joy of blessing somebody? Out of the blue, it's better to give than to receive, right? And so tonight, this is how God measured me. He doesn't measure me by what I have. Did you hear me? God does not measure us by what we have. He measures us by what we give away. And let me tell you something. I think a church that sits on a lot of money ain't right with God. Amen? Amen. I mean, it's that philosophy of life. I know you just don't go out the window and start throwing your money away, but bless somebody. Bless just somebody that can't bless you back. They can't give you nothing. And you know what God's going to do after this? Are y'all ready? Y'all ready? Everybody <laughs> awake? He's going to put somebody in front of you. You just keep your eye open. As, as Patsy said earlier, the Lord will say, there was a guy, no, 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 we have to be careful. We could get into a bragging zone, but just, just bless somebody. Show mercy to somebody. And for no reason except just the joy. Charles Stanley said something years ago, and it was simple, but he's right. He said the, uh, the greatest joy in life is knowing that you obey God. See, somebody walks away with your blessing, but you walk away with that joy of knowing I was Jesus today. I was Jesus today. And um, so I felt like I did all the talking. But what's mine is mine, and I shared it. <laughs> right? Concerning that message tonight, uh, you know the disciples were with Jesus for a long time. And Jesus tried to teach teach them the life that they should live what we've heard tonight from uh, the Luke right here that's right 
and he done things that the disciples were just knocked down about, you know. They couldn't believe it. He was doing that. Yeah. Like talking to the woman at the well, you know. That's, that's right. right. Dad. But he taught them a lesson, like you've taught us a lesson tonight, what we must do to inherit eternal life, like the lawyer, you know. And and uh, they, they, Jesus was going away, and he told them that he'd be going away. And he wanted them to continue on what he had taught them, yes. the life that they should live and be a neighbor to. Amen. To the people. Amen. But Amen. Uh, what they done, I don't know. They did. Dad, because remember in the book of Acts, there was a beggar who just kept nagging and begging when the disciples would go in. And finally, Peter said, sir, we don't have silver and gold, but what we have, in Jesus' name, get up and walk. So they shared what that gift that God had given them. And I, I just, I just, I dread for the, there's a lot of kinds of sinful people, but I, I'm scared for anybody that has to stand before Jesus who was a stingy person. I mean, God is a giver. Amen. He loves what kind of giver? Yes, a cheerful giver. So, uh, good word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Any questions, any comments, any additions? Reckon what happened to the lawyer? The lawyer? <laughs> good question. Good question. Hmm. He had a choice. He was told by Jesus what he must do. Go and do it. And they said that they they uh, had, a, had a prayer on that Deuteronomy 6-5 twice, twice a week oh, or twice a yeah. day. Twice a day, I think. Yes. Wow. Wow. And that's what he quoted to Jesus. Deuteronomy 6-5. And he, he could say it right. Yeah. It's scary we know how to talk Bible, but not just bless somebody, isn't it? Yeah. Amen.